before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've started a Patreon account. On here you get more copyrighted material and they'll be uploaded 48 hours prior to YouTube. If you want to support or visit, link is in the description. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. After one year away, Virgo Taraji P. Henson is back hosting for a third time in four years and with this she joins Monique as the most shows hosted for the BET Awards. Opening the show was Megan Thee Stallion, performing Hiss, which is one of my favorite songs this year. I'll have more to say about it in December. And let me just say Megan is making every right move this weekend, release an album Friday, perform at the BET Awards Sunday. Club Shay Shay interview out Monday. She's getting that promo in. She also threw in Boa and Where My Girls At. But before I continue, I am very hurt that Normani's performance was scrapped due to an injury. I wish you could have wheelchair improv, but Normani's biggest strength is her dancing. Seriously, what do the R&B gods got against her? But anyway, Taraji then shows up to mock Kendrick's Juneteenth concert performing her version of Not Like Us making sure that the night is about us. No beef, all love. Yeah, sure. Coleman Domingo presents Best International Act to Tyla, representing South Africa. Taraji then highlights all the tomfoolery we had in 2024, from Cat Williams to Usher's Super Bowl show and all the beefs. The next performer was someone who's been trying to get on the main stage for years and the rainy Best New Artist winner, for the Grammys at least, Victoria Monet. And it's a full circle moment as she's been trying to get on this stage for years. And she performs On My Mama and All Right. And I'm reminded of past Sierra performances, but she serves in all categories. Also, shout out Sean Bakehead. But it's very weird that she got snubbed out of this year's BET Best New Artist Award. But I guess BET knows that she's been working for years. And I guess that's why. From Sisters and Zatima, Deval Ellis presents the best male R&B pop artist to Usher, Shocker. Also, when they said Drake's name, I might have heard a jeer. B. Simone, who doesn't shower, plays a game with the audience defining what is a black job, a response to what was said during the debates. But after this game, Sexy Red performs, and every time I see Sexy Red now, I can't help not to think what Kendrick said. The crowd is hype over this, I don't know why and I will not discuss this performance any further. I will also say this is also a full circle moment for Sexy Red. If you don't know, last year she performed Pound Town in the audience in front of gospel legend Bobby Jones, and now she graced the main stage. BET then decides to shine a light on some black fashion designers, and if you want to do that, why not bring back Rip the Runway? But anyway, Tiny's daughter, Eris, and another artist, Van Van, made their professional debut on the main stage telling kids to be you. And I'll be nice, but I'll just say, I hope they know they have a Kids' Choice Awards in a couple weeks. Then Will Smith performs a new song, a very inspirational piece that is different from his Fresh Prince or even his Jiggy With It days. But I do feel like he's still trying to repair his image from his disastrous 2022 that will not be discussed here. Glorilla then takes the stage performing Yeah Glow, TGIF, and Wannabe. And let me just say, this is what artist development can do for some people. Not saying that she used to suck, but she came a long way from F and F, and I wish she would have performed TGIF more because it's her most recent single. But after this, Childish Gambino isn't too pleased that he has the same amount of BET awards as Sam Smith, and this was meant to parody Jay Z's speech at this year's Grammys. But he then presents Album of the Year to Killer Mike's Michael, and thank God he did not get arrested. But he gives a sermon, a jelly roll type sermon. But after this, Shabuzi takes the stage performing his soon to be number one hit, A Bar Song Tipsy, another song I'll discuss in December. But we get our first surprise performer in Jay Kwan performing the original Tipsy. And I like that he's giving him his flowers. The cast of A Different World presents the best new artist. And thank God it went to Tyla. And I think BT was playing Longboard Game, as I think Tyla has more longevity than Sexy Red does. Big night for Tyla. And she's yet to perform. D 
DJ Mustard and Andre Day, Odd Combination, presents the Female R&B Pop Artist Award to the absent SZA. She should have won Album of the Year at the Grammys. Then Lotto takes the stage performing an unreleased personal song, then Big Mama and briefly Sunday Service. Nice for her to shout out Ice Spice. The cast of College Hill presents the BT Her Award to Victoria Monet on My Mama, right again, and she brought out her mama on stage. How fitting. Then we finally get that title performance with Gunna and Skillet Bing for Jump. And I was confused on why there was a tiger in her performance and Africa doesn't have tigers. But then I realized that's the name of her fan base. We also get a Sprite exclusive performance for Dochi performing Rocket. It was brief. Miss Poopy Farty Pants Ice Spice performs Fat Butt and the Fart Song. Nice for her to shout out Lotto. But Ice Spice once again shows everyone that she doesn't have much to offer. Let's move on. The cast of the Miss Pat Show presents Best Actress to the absent Regina King. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis alongside L.A. Reid and Babyface then present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Usher, the moment I've been waiting for. And I'm curious why J.D. didn't present him. Wait, I know why. But the tribute starts off with Childish Gambino singing an acapella version of You Don't Have to Call with Kiki. Then Kiki performs You Make Me Wanna and pulls her pants down like Usher did back in the day. We also see Summer Walker performing her song Good Good. And we also have Coco Jones performing There Goes My Baby in the audience. And that was homage to his first ever BET Award performance. Marsha Ambrosius performed Spotlight. Not much to say here. Chloe then performed Good Kisser. Tinashe performed Nice and Slow. Tiana Taylor and Victoria Monet performed Bad Girl. And Lotto drops the ball when she performed Yeah, That Was Not Needed. And I just found out that this is where Normani got scrapped at. But this was a mostly female tribute. And I guess Usher spent most of his years performing for the ladies. The ladies, and Childish Gambino, wants to perform for him. But watching this, I might have figured out what is missing in male R&B. The answer is nobody wants to dance. That's why he and, as for his many flaws, Chris Brown were able to stick around for so long. If these guys would have had an inch of Usher's stage presence, they would definitely thrive today. And a lot of people on Black Twitter, or X, pointed that out. During his speech, BET was heavy on the mute button. Way to ruin the moment, BET. Niecy Nash and her wife presents Video of the Year to Victoria Monet's Oh My Mama. Once again, shout out Sean Bankhead. Lauren Hill makes her highly anticipated return with her son YG Marley. First, she started off with the title track of her number one iTunes album, an album that I just reviewed on this channel. Then she performed Lost Ones, Hi Wycliff, and she finally brought our son YG performing a song that I don't recognize at the moment and before transitioning into Praise Ja in the Moonlight. And after getting this, Wyclef went on stage for a miniature Fuji reunion. And I'm glad to see Lauren Hill doing what she loves again. And it's also kind of funny that in 2005, she opened up the BET Awards and nearly 20 years later, she closes it. This year's award show started off strong, but sadly it did not end that way. Taraji was okay as a host. It's probably the best show that I liked from her. And also, did Money Long's performance get scrapped? Cause she was on the pre-show saying, I am a performer, but we never get to see her on the main stage. But anyway, my two favorite performances was Victoria Monet's because she delivered in all fronts. And my second favorite being Lauren Hill, YG Marley, and Wyclef, cause I'm just glad to see Lauren Hill performing again. Now the worst performances are coming from two different areas in beef. Ice Spice and Lotto have the two worst performances to me. And Sexy Red got off very lucky. If she didn't have the crowd on her side, she probably would have been the worst. But that concludes the 2024 BET Awards. Tell me what y'all think in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.